Hello everyone, this is Hectic and I am talking to you on a Saturday uh, before uh, Valentine's Day and I am going to make my promise pasta uh, combination here. Uh, I made, uh, I slipped in a meat dish last time. Uh, instead of using pasta because I knew that we had done about four pounds of pasta in the past week and that's a lot of pasta for us. Um, so I am back on to what I had promised to make for uh, Valentine's Day for everyone to give them options for food that is easy to make, delicious, and will give you it's quick to make too, so that's also good. So it will make it so that you have more time to spend with your sweetie if that's what you're choosing to do instead of spending your time in the kitchen. So it's also minimal cleanup for the most part. These are only one to two pot dishes, so that that's a, a good thing. All right, so I am going to start off today talking about fettuccine alfredo and I, I, I do um, apologize to everyone that um, we're doing a new setup here. Uh, I've got a microphone now that is separate from my headset so the volume levels um, are different than what I am used to and uh, we have actually got two cameras up but uh, the second camera is my first camera that I only spent 20 bucks on and it kept dying on us and right before stream it decided to die again. So we decided we were not going to uh, mess with it and just decided we would solve what the problem is with that camera later or replace it. Um, so today I will be making fettuccine alfredo first. And this is the classic recipe for it. It's a very, Pink very pan. simple recipe. Both of these are, really. And when you have simple recipes, yay, I got cheered by an anonymous, an, 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 a cheerer who does not wish to be identified. <laughs> Okay, uh, when you have a very simple recipe, there's no Pink place egg. for your food to hide. You need to use the best quality, freshest ingredients that you can get. And for Pink these egg. recipes, that is really not that big. Thank you, Anonymous Cheer, for little bitties there, uh, several little, little intervals egg. of bitties. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, I, when you're talking about fettuccine alfredo, you're talking about a good quality pasta. You can use a fresh pasta if you like. That obviously tastes better than the pasta in a box. It wouldn't be you, would it? <sighs> okay. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Fine, go ahead, make fun of me. Everybody will enjoy that. Um, anyway, uh, for fettuccine alfredo, that's a good quality pasta. You can get fresh pastas in the refrigerator section, or you can make the pasta yourself. There's also nothing wrong with using the boxed pastas, which is what I'm going to be using. And uh, pink, pink. get fresh cream. It it needs the cream, and you don't want to use an off brand that may have an off flavor. You know, so spend the extra 50 cents pink, pink. and get yourself a name brand cream like Darigold if you're in the United States. And if you are, uh, pink, pink. the other thing is you need to make sure that your eggs are fresh. So get yourself some fresh eggs. Don't just use whatever's left in the fridge pink, pink. if it's getting close to its use-by date. Um, that isn't for the fettuccine. That's for the carbonara. Uh, pink, pink. And then <clears throat> use a good butter. Don't put salt in it. Oh, wow. Thank you for the 100 biddies. Thank you very, very much for that. I appreciate it. Uh, we both do, and um, 
we, every time you do that, you jog my memory a little there of what it was I was talking about. <laughs> Thank you for 10 more bits. Um, <laughs> uh, we all think we know who it is, but we could be completely wrong. <sighs> wow. Thank you. Thank you so much for all of the bits. Um, we, uh, the last ingredient for the fettuccine alfredo is, parm is butter and parmesan Pink. cheese. You, again, you want to use a good quality butter. You do not want to use salted butter. Uh, you need to control the, the uh, amount of salt you add to your dishes. And you don't want to just leave it up to the, the company who made the butter to decide how much sodium you have in your dish. So, use an unsalted butter, and then you need to use a Parmesan cheese. And I will talk about a Parmesan cheese first, because this is the easiest method. It is a grated Parmesan cheese. It's pretty inexpensive. I mean, I got this giant container. It's uh, one pound, eight ounces. That's a lot of Parmesan cheese, and I got it for about nine bucks. It is more expensive if you buy a wedge of cheese. However, if you buy a wedge of the cheese, you need to grate it yourself. And the advantage of that is when you use a pre-grated uh, Parmesan, it's drier. Uh, the individual bits are drier. And if you use a fresh wedge of cheese, it melts slightly better. It melts a little smoother because it, it has the moisture in it that's protected by the wedge shape of the cheese and by being in a bigger one. Hello, deaf guy. How are you doing today, Connor? Um, can we get a shout out not only for Connor, but also for Chef Maria, who is a, uh, oh, you did? Um, I missed that while I was stammering. Um, there we go. Chef Maria was playing Left for Dead 2. She also is a major player in the uh, Long Dark community. And that is how I first met her. Pink, pink. And she's been, oh, thank you so much, Connor, again, for more bits. A hype train is close. Woohoo! Um, as you can all see, we have met our first stream goal. I thank those of you who contributed. It allowed us to upgrade some of our equipment. Uh, we just need to do a few more little upgrades and then the big one of a computer. But the computer, I don't think I can ask you guys to help with. I would appreciate it if you did, but I'm not going to ask. Um, I want to thank everybody who has uh, newly followed me. I want to thank everyone who is still following me, and I want to thank everyone who has not yet followed, but they're giving me their time and watching my cooking, so I appreciate that. Uh, all right, we're going to start out with fettuccine alfredo. Now, like I said, this is a very simple recipe, and unfortunately, it tends to get a lot of things added onto it just by... Uh, restaurants and chefs who feel they need to make a statement with the food and unfortunately uh, the dish kind of suffers for it the dish literally no problem chef Maria we love to we love to have you here even if you can't stay for long I know that you are on the opposite side of the world like uh, Connor is, so I realize this is midnight for you guys or later, and I really appreciate your time. Um, fettuccine Alfredo, the classic recipe as it was originally cooked, was cream, butter, Parmesan cheese, pepper, touch of salt, if you need to balance that, fettuccine, and Parmesan cheese. Finish it with a little bit of, of parsley, and that's that's the recipe. It doesn't have nutmeg in it, doesn't have garlic in it. The classic fettuccine alfredo is basically an Italian form of 
macaroni and cheese. It is a very simple, rich cream and cheese sauce that you thicken, not with a white sauce, not with a bechamel, but it is actually thickened by first reducing the butter and uh, cream together. And then you take the pasta, you do not drain it, and you lift it from the boiling water into your reduced cream and butter and the the starch that is on the pasta thickens the sauce for you. It doesn't get really, really thick, but you don't want it to. A, fe a fettuccine alfredo is a, a creamy, rich, decadent sauce, but it is also an extremely simple sauce. And it is one that you can add things to. You can add shrimp to it. You can add seafood. I often add mushrooms and beef or mushrooms and chicken. Chicken fettuccine alfredo is incredibly popular. But I'm going to show you the classic, basic fettuccine alfredo. For once, I have all of my recipes up before the stream. You can all gasp in shock. You're dying. Did you choke, honey? Are you okay? Um, let me see. I have got something I have to put in here in this. It's probably just water from the fact that the shrimp is frozen, but I don't really want it in there. So, All right. We have got... One other thing is I no longer have a, a microphone that I can flip up and mute. So if I cough or choke or sneeze, all of which is possible because I am both asthmatic and have a lot of allergies, you're going to hear it. I apologize. I will turn my head away, but you will be hearing it. I have a lovely microphone. I have a microphone. You know what? We need to celebrate. Pink, pink. Pink, pink does a dance. Pink Pig is dancing for the new equipment, for the new arm, for the, the second camera, for our microphone, for the other equipment that we have Pink ordered Pig. in to make our stream better. Pink Pig! Yay! Pink Pig! Yay! Okay, so I am going to start this out in my very large... Uh, deep frying pan, and I am going to turn it now to my stream recipes, so I do not uh, give you the wrong information. So, um, we're going to be cooking one pound of fettuccine, which is 16 ounces, and husband needs to get that started. I am going to take and measure a cup and a half of heavy cream. And in this case, I'm using half and half because, well, just because I am. Um, it still has the benefit of cream, but it's a little thinner. You need to start the, the water in the fettuccine, honey. So here we go. There is a cup of cream. And I have got, I'm just going to eyeball it here. That is roughly half a cup of cream. So I've got a cup and a half of cream in here. This would be just like, it's it's the consistency is more like a uh, thin cream, a thinner cream, like if you were to get it fresh. Oh, it's already done? Yep. Okay, I will move that off then. Put that up there. Okay. Put this away. And I need then a quarter cup of butter, which is half of a stick. And I will get this started cooking here to warm it up. And so I have got that over a medium heat. You really don't want to boil or scald your milk. So, and I will then take my knife. Boy, if that second camera had worked, you guys would have all been so pleased because it would have shown you uh, every area on my table instead of just 
the usual area. Uh, okay, so I have got four tablespoons of butter, which is a quarter cup. Each stick of butter is a half a cup, and this is unsalted. I am going to take and cut that into smaller pieces so that it will melt faster. that in there and butter for now I was going to make a very plain ca uh, pasta carbonara but I decided what the heck this is for, for Valentine's Day I will uh, show you how to make my the first dish I ever cooked for Andrew I made a uh, seafood pasta carbonara or pasta carbonara with seafood and it had angel hair pasta. I am forbidden to use angel hair pasta ever again. So I am using thin spaghetti, which is definitely an option. And I am going to, I add some uh, shrimp to it, uh, about a pound. And um, I, again, I don't use little shrimp. I use the bigger shrimp. They're at least medium size. The ones I have here are raw, large shrimp. They are peeled and deveined. And what deveined means is that the uh, intestine is cut from the back of the uh, the back of the shrimp so you, it's, it's the black line that runs down the back you really don't want to have that and I need to be checking to see if my uh, I am checking to see whether or not the pasta is all the way cooked I'm having trouble grabbing it because I have not brought back a fork. A pasta fork. Cheap little one that we got. Um, basically, I just need to hook some pasta in here. Oops. Hook some pasta in here and pick it up and make sure that it is actually all the way cooked. Woohoo, got two pieces stuck together. And it's hot. So now one thing you do not want to do when you're using a pasta that you're going to be using for the um, thickening of your of your pot of your dish. You don't want to put oil in it. A lot of people put like a tablespoon or so oil in their cooking pasta to keep it from sticking. You do not want to do that in this case. Okay. It is just a touch beyond al dente, meaning it is a little bit more resistant to the tooth than I would choose if I was going to eat it just as it is, but you do cook it for a little bit in the pan. So that is fine in this case. You don't want to have overcooked fettuccine because then what you just got is mushy pasta and that's not pleasant for anybody. Ah, uh, good night, Connor. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. I know that tomorrow is his night off his day off it's the one day his his cafe is not open and the man streams eight or nine hours a day six days a week and uh i could not do that <laughs> uh, it's one thing if you're doing a computer type thing where you're doing it playing a game it is something else completely if you are in a working kitchen as the only chef 
and having to cook every order that comes in to order. And he handles it with style and grace and an unswerving dedication to the quality of their food. And I have just so much respect for him. Um, if you're not follow him, following him already, uh, consider giving him a shout and uh, going and catching one of his streams and seeing what he's all about over there in Cheltenham, England. And that is in Gloucester. Gloucestershire, and it is a cafe that specializes in rotisserie chicken, and it is actually the only place in Cheltenham or all of Gloucestershire that you can get rotisserie chicken. So, they make delicious food, and they're a wonderful, fun uh, stream to watch. I recommend them highly. talked about him. Now I've got the butter melted in here and I am warming the cream and I am waiting for it to thicken slightly. It will just reduce a bit. Um, the one thing I do not want it to do is boil. I don't really even want it to simmer. Um, but we are looking good so far with that. Uh, a suggestion to go with this as if you choose this for your and this is wine so hello I am going to recommend that if you are making this as a dinner for your sweetie or even your sweetie plus your children or just a bunch of friends you can serve this with you know a nice salad and that makes a, a complete meal. Um, maybe some bread if you want to get some uh, garlic bread or something like that. I would suggest that's where you want to put the garlic, not in the feta cheese. Um, give the recipe a try, just as written as you would. Give it a give it a shot. It's it's really worth it. Um, I've used really nice quality. Uh, cream and it is combining with the butter and then it just needs to have the pasta added in at the right time. So, and what's making it stick is the starch. So that's not a surprise and that is Whoa, hot. What we want to have it actually do is, is to continue to have those starches if you had rinsed it. And I'll bring this in so that you can see it. Uh, if I tip it slightly here and pull the pasta back, you can see that the pasta water is slightly white. And the reason why it's white is starch. That's the starch that comes off of the pasta. And I am not making this with a high protein chickpea uh, pasta you can and I am not making this with a gluten-free again you can um, I am using just regular pasta made with semolina flour so alrighty then this is starting to look good it is warmed up and yes that's one of my favorite Christmas uh, sweaters it's nice and warm it's a pullover actually and it has little reindeer and snowflakes on it so i really should get short sleeve things because i never want to drag them in the food but i i like long sleeves they feel warmer okay this is steaming quite actively i think you can see the steam and at this point it is starting to come together I am going to go ahead and put this on my spoon rest, even though it's not a spoon. To move this down so you can see what I'm doing. Not that it's going to be terribly fascinating. But I am going to take the pasta, and this is a pound of fettuccine alfredo. That is, depending on the size of your, size of your serving, enough to serve 
I'm sorry. It's because I'm pulling back from the camp, from the, uh, where I'm doing this to keep the steam out of my face. Uh, this is enough to serve two to four people. Um, and I will actually put that here. Just put that one right there. Just put a grip on it because it's all slipping away from me. And you're just lifting it directly from the cooking water into your uh, cream and butter. And that's because you want the starch that's on it and the little bit that's in the water that is still on your top. You're definitely going to have to add more water by a lot for the next batch. Okay, slide the little most of the pasta out of here yet. I was really excited about the idea of the two camera thing because then you could have seen the entire table where my little prep area is that I'm bringing things in from and, you know, the cooking area with a close-up on the cooking. But we'll get it ironed out. My stream shall improve. All right. So I have now got all of the pasta out of there. And... We now take and put it back up onto the heat. Hey, Jake, how are you doing? No, it's no problem. I'm just glad you made it. Uh, thanks for coming in to watch, Jake. So I am making fettuccine Alfredo here. What I have done is I have a pound of cooked fettuccine that I have not drained and have added in to my slightly reduced a cup and a half of cream and quarter cup of butter and you put the pasta directly in here because the pasta water in the pasta thickens your thickens your sauce so now i am going to add one of the last ingredients to this and that would be that would be the half a cup of grated parmesan and I'm just going to add it over my hand here and hope it comes out because it's a brand new container. All right, so I have got approximately a quarter cup there. I have got another quarter cup for a half a cup. And now I just keep this moving because you are combining this in the milk and the cream and the butter and stirring it around so that the cheese will melt and also continue to thicken the sauce. And it is the starch and the cheese that is doing the work for you. In the case of both of these pastas I'm making today, the sauce is a pan sauce. It makes itself. You don't add... Uh, extra things to it. You don't add extra thickeners. Got that? Okay. And I will just continue stirring this until it's finished thickening. I've got this only on a medium heat, by the way. You do not want to do this higher. Uh, you're not trying to boil the milk. You're not trying to boil the sauce. You are just allowing the chemical thickeners of the starch and the cheese to melt and combine into a nice creamy sauce. Note to self, second camera needs to be a bit higher because I'm splashing it. I'm sorry, is it just too far away from my face? Okay. Like I said, we've got a new setup here, so we're trying to get used to it. And it is being a little bit of a challenge as I move around. I'm used to the microphone moving with me because it was attached to my headset. Now it is actually a boom mic. So, woohoo! Boom! Anyway, this sauce has, as you can see, mostly come away. It is now combined on the pasta with leaving very little in the pot because it has created itself into a sauce. Do we have the black 
a plate somewhere, honey, because I'm going to need to plate two of these things. Uh, the second one being the pasta carbonara. Okay, we'll just use the same one twice then, and we'll do it for pictures. So, all right. This is actually ready to go. That didn't take a lot, did it? It's actually ready to serve. What I need to do is double chat the seasoning. So I do that with it because I have added nothing to it yet. I will taste it. Mmm. The lovely creamy sauce. It is, um, you can taste the Parmesan, you taste the butter in it, you taste the cream in it. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and maybe a quarter teaspoon. Uh, Parmesan is a very salty um, herb, so you, pardon me, very salty cheese, uh, so you want to watch how much salt you add to it. And I am going to add a little bit of finely ground pepper. And then I'm also going to add some parsley because it makes it pretty and it tastes good. Not as much as I would usually add. I'm only adding about a teaspoon. And I will now take and mix this through so that it combines the rest of the way. make a little plate of this. I'm going to stop using the pasta fork at this point and use some tongs. Did you want to try to put the light box up or take pictures after stream, honey? Okay, I have got that mixed through as well. I've got some spoon racks, and I will pick up my tongs. There's a lot of pretty ways to serve this. Doesn't really matter in the end, but if you're trying to be a little fancy, you can use tongs, and you create a nice swirl of pasta with it. And you start it off in your container here. You transfer it over to your plate where you add the nice swirl of pasta. And then I am going to take and ladle a little of the extra sauce onto it. This is not going to be very saucy as it is, but it goes for making a very pretty dish. All right. So, here we've got the pasta. And as you can see, that sauce is pretty thick. It's, it's got the milk and the, and the butter, pardon me, the cream and the butter and the cheese. And what you come out with is a pretty little plate of pasta like this. And here you can see it there. I put a little extra sauce on it. The entire pasta leaf is uh, covered with it. So I am turning the heat off of this because it does not need to be heated any further. All right. Here we go. And I'm going to move this down to here. And I will do the tasting out of the pan here for you. As you can see, of all that cream and butter that I put in here has melted in and coated the pasta nice and thickly. And I am going to wind this up on a fork and 
it would have been prettier doing it a different way, but here it is under the four. And I'm going to taste that. Mm. The pasta is tender to the touch to the touch. It is creamy. You can taste the quality of the cream. You can taste the fettuccine, uh, the noodle taste going through there. You can taste the Parmesan cheese. It's slightly salty, but the sauce is creamy. It's adhering to every noodle. I think you can see it here in this. And I now need to send this away with my husband, who needs to rinse this out for me, and I will start the next dish. So, the next dish, and I'm going to scoop another little bite here because I just have to have it. There you go. Uh, the next dish is going to be pasta carbonara, and it is a variation of it. The very simple pasta carbonara is a, it comes from Rome, and it is, um, a very classic dish. It is a sauce made of eggs and usually angel hair pasta or spaghetti. And it has cheese in it, pecorino romano. And I'm using Parmesan because I prefer its taste over pecorino romano. Uh, it's stronger. Uh, the romano cheese is stronger. Um, and it is thickened by, once again, the starch on your noodles. And the eggs are, they create a velvety sauce. And it has bacon in it, pancetta, or um, I'm probably going to slaughter the pronunciation of this, guanciale. And what that is, is basically um, a pork cheek that is profound in fat. And you render all the fat down and have crispy, porky bits left over. And then you cook it in there. And basically what it is is bacon and eggs. It's served uh, for dinner, served very commonly for breakfast. That's very good. I am going to tell you <clears throat> the story about my first meal I cooked for my husband. This, by the way, is the, you can see this cord here, and this cord here, this is part of my microphone set. So, um, my husband came over from England to marry me, and I picked him up at the airport after he had nine hours of flight, and he, I took him directly to a hotel, fed him a pizza, and he crashed. A uh, big time difference. Thank you, sweetheart. A big time difference between us. And um, so he was pretty jet lagged. He met my parents the next morning for the first time and met my dog, Mako, who was a six month old puppy and was being held in my mother's arms. And she jumped from my mother's arms to my husband's in the parking lot. It was a suicide thing, but it was love at first sight. And she loved him every day of her life with a just consuming passion. Um, okay, there's the image. Uh, so the basic pasta carbonara wasn't something that I wanted to feed him. I wanted it to be impressive because this is the first meal I cooked for my husband and husband-to-be at this point. And I drove him across the state, 350 miles, to meet my eldest brother, uh, my sister-in-law, and their two kids, although one of them wasn't present at the time, um, busy doing something. But he met my family over there and it was it was an interesting uh, meeting because 
my oldest brother has a sense of humor like me, and he, they're just very warm, welcoming people, so that probably helped a lot, although I'm pretty sure Andrew's head was swimming by this time. We made pasta carbonara with seafood, and I used a box of angel hair pasta, a box, which it said served six people. It said it served six. So we set that to boiling, and I made the rest of what made it up, and that included baby spinach, which I will be sauteing now just very quickly. You just need to have it wilt, and you, I'm going to add a little wine to it, because it needs a little bit of a poaching liquid, and the wine will taste nice. Um, I made the, the pasta carbonara, I added lots of shrimp, I added smoked salmon, I added extra cheese because why not, and to this I took and added one pound of angel hair pasta, and the angel hair pasta reacted somehow with the radiological extrusions uh, of the nearby Hanford nuclear site. And that pound of pasta made over two gallon baggies of leftovers. It completely filled two bursting, mounded over my sister-in-law's um, her uh, big salad bowl, the communal salad bowl thing, and my brother and I believe my husband both had about uh, three servings. My sister-in-law had two, I had about one and a half, my nephew had two or three servings, and at the end of the meal, which we served with a gorgeous uh, rosemary bread and a salad. It ended up that we had just got it flat to the level of the lip of, yeah, it's Kat's fault. My niece was not there. Um, but in any case, we ate maybe a third of what we had made and still filled completely two gallon baggies with the leftovers and the joke in the family is that it is the it is the never ending pasta bowl no matter how much we tried oh I don't want to do that I've been hitting the microphone um, and it's shrinking like a little flan I need to stiffen the arm if I can okay Okay. Uh, yeah, no matter how much we ate, it, it never seemed to go down in level. Now, what you want to do with this, with this spinach here is just wilt it down and probably over about a medium heat. A little bit of liquid. You can use wine. You can use a little bit of water. And uh, a pinch. Let me get the pinch of nutmeg to go over the top of it. You don't want to add very much because you don't want this whole thing tasting like nutmeg. Um, so I am getting this started. It is steaming on the bottom. And although this looks like a ton of spinach, when you wilt it, it just shrinks and just becomes this tiny little bit. And other things we are not aware of at this time is whether or not this microphone is going to pick up my dog whining or the neighbors thumping the children in the playground right across the street from us screaming like little pterodactyls. I don't know why they do that, but if you've ever been in a grocery store or something like that and someone has between a year and three-year-old child with them, they do this weird sounding where they shriek at the top of their lungs 
And from across the store, you'll hear another child answer them. Again, a wordless shriek. They sound like little pterodactyls calling to each other. And uh, it's interesting, especially if you're not used to children to see them and hear them do this. Well, they do it over there in our playground that we have for our apartment complex. And it can get quite annoying because... At times, the screams are blood-curdling. You don't know if someone's just had a leg lopped off or if they're just being cheerful. All right. I just need to keep this moving. Like I said, it's just over a medium heat. And you can find my recipes in my Discord under Stream Recipes. And this time, both recipes are already up. So you can follow along. This is would normally be made with pancetta. And, or like I said, guanciale. And uh, I can't have pork products. So I am actually not going to do that to myself. And I will add the bacon bits to my husband's. Uh, at the end so he can have the yumminess and, and you can see how much this has gone down from that giant mound of spinach that it started with so, let me taste what it's doing yep that's spinach it's just sort of a green um, soft leaf um, baby spinach like this is very mild in flavor. It's almost velvety in the feel of it in your mouth. Um, I know, I know. My husband has a theory about uh, greens, and that is Caterpillar could have pooed in them. So he would rather not when I don't make him. So... This is almost ready to come off, and I will set it aside till the end of the cooking. You have got the spaghetti water coming up to heat, honey, I hope. Okay. All right, I just need this to be just a fractional bit more wilted, and this will come off and sit in my egg container. I am taking the eggs out and this uses, now some people with their carbonara, okay, some people with the carbonara will use um, the egg yolks only and some people will, why does this thing keep sinking? Um, I think my boom microphone is hungry. It, it keeps getting closer. Uh, they will use just the egg yolk, and some recipes call for that. Some people use the entire egg. I use the entire egg because I think it just makes a better sauce. I think it, it adds more sauce, and it's um, silkier, I think. Okay, so I will set that aside, and now, checking my stream recipe. This uses 8 ounces of baby spinach leaves and a pinch of nutmeg. We've already done that. It uses a half a stick of butter. So, I am going to take a half a stick of butter. And that is four teaspoons into tablespoon or thereabout sections. All right, and I'm going to kick that into our pan and let it melt. And I am just going to keep an eye on that. And the next thing I will be adding to that 
is the pound of medium shrimp, ideally. This is just a little bit under a pound. Wild-caught raw shrimp. Uh, these are large. Uh, the tail is off. It has been um, deveined and shelled. And um, I am going to be adding those in here in a minute. You can see that I have actually got this. And I have got those little babies in there now. And I need to find out what that is on that shrimp. So, ah, they deveined it, but they left the vein on the outside. Interesting. Okay. That's part of why you inspect your shrimp before you use it. All right. I am putting this back into here. bowl and I am going to take my four eggs and crack them into my pan and these are just uh, these are just large eggs they're not extra large or jumbo um, egg size does matter um, obviously a bigger egg you have more egg ingredient and a smaller egg, you have less egg ingredient. So you want to pay attention when a recipe is written to say uh, how many to put in here. Um, I believe my recipe actually says medium, but mm, a large egg is nice too. It just makes more sauce. And I kind of like it saucy. All right, so I've got my whisk here. And in this case, I am not going to be adding milk to it. That is one of the things that is actually, if you add milk or cream to it, sour cream, anything like that, you, you do that around uh, an Italian, and you may very well get a glove across the face and a, a challenge to a duel. It is just not done, just like they don't really add cheese to... Uh, pasta dishes, or pardon me, they don't add cheese to fish dishes. That's it. Sorry, it's kind of one of those things. All right, so these just need to saute, and I am going to increase the heat slightly to about a medium high to do that because I am sauteing. Done with this, except for I need to cut up my smoked salmon and I've got four ounces of salmon and this is hot smoked salmon which actually it doesn't do anything to the flavor it doesn't make a difference that way it does however make a difference in the uh, solidity of the fish and when you hot smoke a salmon it is soft and moist all the way through um, I am used to a more, uh, a, this is a Norwegian um, smoking, and that is different than the Pacific Northwest. We, in general, cold smoke, and that means that the fish stays firmer. Um, doesn't make a difference in taste. It's a texture thing. Okay, so I have taken... The skin off of this now because you don't want to eat the skin with it um, again that's just a, a preference all right I am going to flip this around and as you can see the frozen shrimp is adding a lot of liquid to it that's fine the pasta water will add quite a bit of um, thickening to it so that's good and you don't want to overcook your shrimp you want to cook them just to the point where they're pink and curled up and they still can be tender to the bite at that point so all right 
I've got the shrimp going. I have got the eggs whipped up. To this, I am going to add a teaspoon of dill. And that would be fresh dill. Uh, this is about a half a teaspoon of dried dill because the dried dill uh, actually takes more. Um, so dried dill is going to be twice as dense as your uh, fresh dill. And fresh dill is a wonderful flavor to put into this. I am using this. The whole reason for drying herbs is for preservation so that you have it around when you want it. And that's probably never going to change. It's uh, You get a better flavor from fresh um, herbs. In some cases, completely incomparable. But the dried uh, ones make it so that you have uh, the herb around when you want it. And you don't have to go dash out to your herb garden and pick it and you know hope it's not under two feet of snow or something. Okay, so I've got this put to one side. And then I've been watching a lot of streams lately that say basically when you have you're making pasta carbonara, you're supposed to put the cheese in with the eggs and add that all at once. That's not how my recipe called for it, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, the shrimp is starting to be done. It's turning pink. It's turning opaque from translucent, meaning it doesn't look kind of jelly-like anymore. But it's not done yet. And this would have, by my recipe, actually had uh, the pancetta cut up and rendered down so that it's nice and crispy. And you'd then be putting that flavor through your entire dish of the smoky, bacony goodness. And we are not having smoky, bacony goodness. We are going to have smoky, salmony goodness, which was also part of the original recipe. And I'm going to keep these in larger chunks because it is going to break up as it's tossed. So I'm just cutting across this 4-inch uh, filet um, in slightly under quarter-inch slices. So I have got this here and this is another one serve it with a salad or without because it ha does have a lot of the spinach in it uh, serve it with some bread if you choose um, or just consider it a one pot thing and just eat it as it is and uh, don't bother with the side side dishes now that is a very moist an oily fish. You can see the oil on my fingers there just from handling the salmon. And that's just a, a quality the salmon has. Okay, so the shrimp are looking very close to being done. I do want to make sure they're completely cooked. No one wants to eat a raw shrimp. I will be updating our screen equipment to let you guys know what else that we have got. And if you choose to get the same equipment, you certainly can follow the links to where it is. Twenty eggs, four hundred eggs, three eggs. No, four eggs, honey. Four. Four eggs. Alright, I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit more. But as you can see, even with this dish, this is going to come together really quickly. As soon as these sh uh, shrimp get done, I will be adding the pasta to the dish and tossing it through. And then I will be adding the uh, eggs in. You actually need to add a measure of the... Um, pasta water to this and that's kind of an odd idea I know but uh, 
you're getting the starch in there and the water is combining with the uh, the pasta to make the sauce and the eggs. So milk on this, I do not want to carry further into my pasta. Up. And you can see that there are places, well, perhaps you can't see as well as I can. You can see here, it's really not wanting to focus, is it? Anyway, the shrimp is turning pale pink uh, in stripes along its back. And the tail end of the shrimp is also turning pink. So that is about where we want it to be. I'm going to give it a couple minutes because I see one or two of the larger shrimp in here. I don't believe they're all the way done. I'm going to test. Just on the edge. Needs maybe 30 seconds more. If you wish to save yourself some time, you can uh, use pre-cooked, pre-peeled shrimp. That's perfectly fine. Just put them in and let the uh, pan heat them up so that they're hot. You don't really want to have cold things in it. All right, so here's where it starts to get tricky. I'm going to take out some of the water that is in there in the pan. And I need to make sure I have at least a certain amount. Okay, and I am going to add that in there to the sauce and see if there is a bit more. So when I need it, I don't have to try to come up with it. Now, the reason why you need to watch your temperature in this, the reason why you need to do this all quickly, is you do not want this to scramble your eggs. And that can happen. Okay, so I am once more going to take my pasta and transfer it. Lifting it right out of the water and into the pan. So I am adding that in there. It's a bit of a messy process when you're reaching things over. I'm taking the Spaghetti, and this is a thin spaghetti, thicker than an angel hair pasta, but not by a whole lot. Try to get this a little closer. And I need to add this in, and I swear it's the same measurement as the fettuccine. It's a pound of pasta. And it is going into the pan. I need to use it all. And this uh, will serve four to six, perhaps, depending on how much uh, of a serving you want. Um, a quarter pound of pasta is still quite a bit of pasta for one person, especially when you start adding in the, the prawns and the scallops and any other kind of seafood. This does work with scallops as well. Um, that they're even more finicky to the touch. Okay, so I have got my noodles on top of my shrimp 
and I want to first toss this around really well. I am going to follow the other advice here just to try and see. And I am going to add in the, sh the cheese directly to the eggs and whip that up so I'm only having to add the liquid while I'm stirring this. So I have got that and I'm going to add a little bit of the pasta water to it to make it a little thinner. It also tempers the egg slightly so you have less of a chance of getting the pasta scrambled eggs. We now take and put this over the top of the pasta. And as soon as you do that, you basically want to turn the heat off because the residual heat will be enough to cook this. And you want to add some more liquid in here and then start stirring it around because this will start its magic of thickening up. And it already is. Um, you want to keep the pasta moving, get it to stir all of the sauce around so that every strand is coated, top to bottom, front to back. And keep this stirring here to get the uh, Parmesan to melt. And like I said, if I had grated my own fresh Parmesan, it would have been a little bit smoother in texture. But it's not bad right now. So, all right, this is basically what we've got. I'm going to take and taste one of the strands. Hmm. It's a lovely velvety eggy texture. I do not believe it needs any salt added. Because of the cheese and I'm going to be adding smoked salmon to it. I am going to add a little bit of pepper. Now traditionally pasta carbonara is a very peppery dish. My husband does not like pepper so I kind of am calm on that. And you continue to mix this through making sure that the sauce is well combined with all of the ingredients. And at this point now add it in. I've got cheese clumps, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to put in my smoked salmon now. I'm just going to kind of clump that in place. I'm done with the heat of this dish. So I am going to move my pasta pot off. Hey, Cuckoo, how are you doing? You're coming in here at the end of my pasta carbonara with seafood. And I've got a little bit of clumping of my cheese because I didn't use the really fresh cheese. But that's okay. It tastes the same. It just has a bit of a clumpy appearance. And you toss the smoked salmon through and it slices. And then we take and add back in the spinach that we sauteed with a little bit of nutmeg and probably a tablespoon of wine in this case. And this makes such a pretty dish, and it tastes like you slaved. But as you can see, this did not take long at all. The, the pasta is done. Uh, the sauce is done. The, the seafood is done. And what you have here is a very creamy, lovely sauce with uh, smoked salmon and shrimp. Tuck the dill in this. 
only the plating up to do. It, it really is one of the best recipes. And I made this for my husband the very first time I cooked for him. And uh, it was delicious. And definitely worth the trouble I went to to do it. So I am going to make a little bit more of a pile. Take some of the things out of the picture. salmon in here and because this is going to be for my husband I am going to put the bacon bits on at the end so he will have bacon in his and I will not in mine so I don't die there we go got a bit of the smoked salmon I want to have show up on top all the pasta around a bit. I am going to add a few pieces of shrimp by hand. And another nice piece of smoked salmon. And yeah, this is me doing the food organizing here. this, I am going to add just a light of sprinkling of parsley to make it pretty. Then touch more of the cheese. And here we have the pasta carbonara with seafood and I will let my husband take a picture of that since it's so pretty. There you go. And I will take the second plate here. Oh, oh, wait, I didn't put the bacon in it. You move bacon. I know one job and I just can't quite do it. All right. There you go. And I'll have Andrew show you the picture of it with bacon in it. Meanwhile. does not have bacon that is rich with smoked salmon and prawns and there you go doesn't that look nice with the bacon on it and you can add the bacon on top for people who don't like bacon and or people like me who are allergic to it all pork products basically taste it and he can tell you what he feels about it. I am going to add, if I turn the heat off, I'm going to add a little extra parmesan for me. And because I do like pepper, I'm going to add a nice little shrimpy on top. And now I'm going to take my pepper grinder. Add a little grind of pepper over the top, which is an extremely fine grind of pepper. I've got it tuned to because I like the pepper fine. And here we have the second plate of pasta. And I am now going to take my my fork and taste. So I've got this all mixed up, and I'm going to take a bit of the shrimp and wind it into the pasta here. 
and make sure I have every little bit of it. So I have some of that in there and have a little bit of the smoked salmon and then make it a little more delicate. The egg sauce is velvety and smooth, and it coats every piece of pasta from top to bottom without being saucy. The, you can taste the Parmesan cheese. Like I said, classic is uh, Pecorino Romano, but that's a stronger flavor, and I prefer the Parmesan instead. You can taste just slightly the dill in here that was with the eggs. Um, you can taste the cheese, you taste the fresh seafood flavor of the shrimp, you taste the smokiness of the uh, smoked salmon with little fresh bits of the um, baby spinach. And altogether, this tastes like something you absolutely slaved over. If you were in a restaurant, you'd probably be paying anywhere between $18 and $25 for this plate. So easy to put together, so delicious, and you get this and you have your dinner with your sweetheart and then go off for the rest of your evening. I am going to thank everybody who came here. Yep, I didn't slave over it at all. This was so easy. The fettuccine alfredo and the pasta carbonara are so, so easy. Do I have any cooks on right now? Let me see. Uh, I do not, as a matter of fact, see any chefs on right now. So I am going to send a raid out to Nagatron, one of my favorites, and who is uh, apparently running a little long on his own stream today. He's doing a tournament. And I want to thank everybody who's, who's come, everybody who's contributed. And I hope you take this and enjoy it on Valentine's Day with your sweetheart. Thank you for coming, everyone, and I will see you again on Tuesday, the day after Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Good food.